Okay, great. Well, we're going to keep letting people join. I'm really happy that you're all here. Um, Nicola, would you mind kicking us off? I wanted to uh, let a few people from the Challenge Mindset community say a quick hi, just so we can get a sense of who's using this idea, who's using these cards. I think it'd be nice uh, if you just want to say a quick hello. Hi, everybody. I'm Nicola Edwards. I'm a career advisor and coach from the University of Guelph. Um, and so I'm, I experiment uh, with the students using uh, the challenge cards to help them find their pathway. I also have a private practice where I'm experimenting um, using them with adults. Um, so I'm, I'm deep into transitions with a high school, a, a student and two university students at home as well. So um, I'd love the cards. I have great conversations and happy to chat with anybody who's got questions. Great. So Nicola, you got the higher ed, you got the private practice, you got the parenting. <laughs> There's so many different ways to approach this issue. But I've been uh, thrilled that you've been able to help so much on the, the journey of building the Challenge Mindset Smart Path. And I'm glad that you're here. Holly, did you want to go next to say a quick hello? Absolutely. Um, thank you for the opportunity, JP. Um, so my name is Holly Justice. Um, I work as a career coach at the University at Buffalo, um, and that's in New York. Um, and we've been in my office, um, almost all of our career coaches, we have six career coaches and then a couple grad students. And we have them using the challenge cards. Um, in fact, we also have our career peers are starting to use the challenge cards in our studio model. Um, which is sort of an open space. And so we've been using them for, I think a couple of years now. Um, and similar to what Nicola was talking about, um, I, it has made it a lot easier to have really interesting conversations with students, conversations I don't think I would have gotten to, um, even with asking them like really open-ended questions and like engaging them. But with the cards, it really gives students, they don't have to focus as much on themselves. And so they're able to really start talking and they're not as stuck in trying to convey to me what interests them. And so we can talk about the cards instead of just them. Um, and it's, that really seems to open them up. Um, and we really talk about all these different themes. And so really fascinating. Um, also, I appreciate what Nicola was saying because um, I am doing a little private practice work as well. And I'm definitely thinking about using the cards in private practice um, because I think they definitely can cut across different um, generations, um, whether it's college students, um, which is who I mainly work with, um, but it can definitely work with others. So I, I've really enjoyed working with um, these cards. It's, it's been really helpful. Thanks, Holly, for saying that. I appreciate it. I, there's a few key phrases you said in there, like open them up. But I also like the way that you said it, that oh, not focusing no. on themselves. Hey, Leah, welcome to the call. Hi, thank you for being here. Um, uh, yeah, not focusing on themselves, which is funny, isn't it? Because isn't that all part of our expertise? <laughs> We're really good at getting them to focus on themselves. And that's part of the journey, isn't it? But for some of them, it is refreshing to take a labor market lens and think about the impact they want to have on the world uh, uh, first. And I've been thinking critically about that. What comes first? I have to tell you, all of my training, all of my mentors, usually the self-awareness piece comes first. Um, but I've been playing creatively, or to use your word, Nicola, experimenting with uh, having the um, identity piece come second. And um, this is really early in my research, but I wanna sh share this idea with you. The more research I do into what's called aspirational identity, the more I find I'm acknowledging at the front end, the amount of change that these young people and, and even adults, you know, some of us are doing are practicing with adults, right? We underestimate dramatically the amount that we will change as people, our values, our interests, our strengths. Um, and this is a key message because if we start with what problem do you want to solve, we can double down on that message to them and tell them that you can change who you are and who you want to be based on the impact you want to have on the world. And, um, it's one of the issues I'm trying to work through uh, as I'm, you know, giving guidance for um, 
teachers, for example, who are sharing this mindset in schools. Um, I would say it's a bit early, but maybe on another webinar, I'll communicate maybe the, the academic research that I'm reading around that topic. And I'd actually love for you all to weigh in. But today, I want to ask you to weigh in on something else. And this is our icebreaker before we get uh, to the main subject, which is a, which is a specific case study in, in the challenge mindset. But my icebreaker for you all comes from my attempt at writing the challenge mindset book. And now that I've said it out loud, I'm accountable to a whole bunch of really bright people. I know how dangerous that was what I just did, but it's for my own benefit, if you don't mind. So as I'm writing the challenge mindset book, which could be another tool that helps new people discover the challenge mindset, I wrote um, a, a blog post with the title Dream Killers. It's a heavy title, uh, but the title Dream Killers was about a story uh, in regards to uh, bad advice. Uh, Holly, I don't know if you gave me the applause on Zoom for the fact that I'm writing a book or the fact that I wrote Dream Killers. I don't know. I don't know yet, but I'll take the, I'll take the applause. <laughs> but I wrote a, a pretty dark post about bad career advice uh, that people have, have, have been getting and I actually asked people on LinkedIn, tell, give me an example of bad career advice you've gotten. And if you read that post on my LinkedIn profile, you will be discouraged. Like I, I have a sense of who you are. I have a sense of why you're on this call. It's like you love helping people thrive. When you, someone like you reads that thread of discouraging career advice, it's going to crush your soul a little bit like it did for me. So I wrote a blog post called Dream Killers. Um, and then I wrote the mirror post, which is dream builders, dream builders. And I'm like, oh, I love building people's dreams. And I wonder if that's you. I wonder if that's us. I wonder if that's, that's what we're called. And, uh, I, I might be wrong. So I thought I would ask you in this format today, like I would literally ask you what you think about that phrase dream builder. So I, I made a poll in zoom. It might've popped up for you. And I'm really wondering if you tell me, no, like, it's not exactly that. It's not about dreaming. It's about something else. Or maybe you'll tell me, yes, it's, it's absolutely about dream builders. And if you don't mind, like, I'd love to do like a, let's do it quantitative, qualitative. So we're getting some quantitative data with the way people are voting. But if I could also ask a volunteer uh, to share their opinion, like uh, verbally out loud, uh, and you can share any, you could share if you, why you voted for yes, why you voted for a little bit or not really, or even that I would call myself something else to you. I would ask for a favor. I would ask you, well, would you mind telling me like another label? Because I'm very curious about what that other label could be. So let's see, we're 21 out of 27. So let me give a last call, last invitation for people. I don't know if those of you who are on mobile, you can see the poll like everybody else. Now we're at 23 of, of 27. I think that's pretty good. Um, so uh, while we get the final votes in, is there a volunteer, someone that would like to say uh, their opinion about why we are or aren't dream builders? Krista, do you want to go first? Yeah, that was an interesting question, um, JP. Um, but my, uh, my gut reaction to it was no, not really. I, I really feel like my role is their coach as they're building to teach them how to build, that that really is their work. Um, but my, my job is to encourage, to support, to coach, to give them the, um, the knowledge about whether it's, um, you know, how to do an information interview or how to do self-assessments. So I, I see myself as the, the coach to their building, but I do feel like that's their work. So that was my initial reaction to that. Uh, I think you sold me. Uh, I think you sold me because... I just heard it that way. Dream builder, like you're building the dream. No, of course not. We're, we're showing them how to build their own dreams. Uh, that's really good. Uh, anybody want to convince me to come back? <laughs> Cause I yeah. think Krista sold me. I'd love to convince you uh, to come back. Cause as soon as you said that, that really resonated with me. And I think the reason for it is as we help people get clarity on what they want on their values, their talents, their passions, like the impact that they want to make on the world. I think that we are those dream builders with them because we're like, okay, what's the first brick? Here you go. Okay. What's the second brick? Here you go. And so all of a sudden you've like your dream building with them. And I think the other aspect of that too is we also give them that permission to dream. 
we give them that evidence, those things that um, show them like this is possible for you. And so I think that's another aspect of the dream building. So that term absolutely resonates with me. Okay. Uh, wow, this is tough. Listen, I got to put more thought into this, but I'm going to save these uh, uh, poll results because I really like the ownership piece that Krista mentioned, but Amelia, you're right. Like we have a role in that. Like, how do we acknowledge that they still have the ownership of that? Um, in the meantime, um, uh, I just wanted to take a second to introduce Sally uh, from the SparkPath team. Um, Sally just joined SparkPath. You're on week number two or three, Sally? Uh, I think I'm on week number three now and it's been really great. So hi everyone, as JP said, my name is Sally and I just joined the team and it's been as amazing as I hope you think it is. Um, basically my job is to empower uh, educators and community people like yourself to give students choice and voice um, and empower them to build their own dreams or make their own dreams. Good point, um, Krista. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Sally. I feel very lucky that you're here. I'm at Sally. Uh, this is a cool story I'll share with you. So Sally invited me to present at a conference, a student-led conference called the Legacy Conference. And she said, why would you present at this conference? Like, what's in it for you? And I said, I'm going to present at your conference because I hope to recruit a student to my team. I'm going to make a presentation about how to get your dream job. And I hope that someone will take me up on it and come work for me and we can create their dream job for them. But what happened during the call was that I did two minutes of research on Sally before I spoke with her and her profile blew me away. She had her own page that said hire Sally that explained some of the achievements that she had uh, achieved in her career. And Sally just graduated from the University of Ottawa. Um, and um, she had reached out to like some really important people to book them for speaking engagements for free. And I'm like, wow, this is a really thoughtful person. So I asked, very provocatively, the first time that we met each other, Sally, what are the odds that I meet someone that's better than you for this job? And I don't know what Sally must have thought, who is this guy? Um, and then we kind of made a bet. Like I, I would say like, uh, like, what are the odds of us finding a better person? So 156 people applied for Sally's job and she got it. She beat everybody out in the whole process. And it was a long process. We did applications, we did uh, submissions, we did a group interview, we did individual interviews. We, there was an assessment, a psychometric assessment. Uh, and now Sally's on the team and I'm thrilled that she's here. So some of her accomplishments include booking Seth Godin for her legacy conference to be a speaker uh, for free. So um, Sally's gonna help us get a lot done. You, you all know that we have a huge mission at SparkPath to help everyone learn the challenge mindset. And, and really the community of people that are on this webinar, you're the ones who do the actual work. And uh, Sally and I see our roles as like, how can we support you to do what you do? Um, and uh, these webinars are a part of that, but I'm sure you'll have way more asks of us. I hope you'll have way more asks of Sally and I moving forward about how we can support you in the dream building work in the supporting dream building work that we, you do. So. Thanks for being here, Sally, and thanks everyone for being here. Sally, I got a quick message from Simone Goudreau. We can't find the link. If you wouldn't mind reaching out to her, I'd love to have her on the call. In the meantime, I'm gonna share my slides with you uh, that I'm working with today because I want you to be able to follow along with the PowerPoint that I built. Um, and uh, I think that might give you some, uh, let's call it learning flexibility for those of you who like to uh, click yourselves. Susan, you wrote a uh, hope holder and possibility generator. That's pretty good. Dream coach. That acknowledges the coach aspect, which I, I really like uh, that suggestion as well. So thank you for that. Uh, so I'll definitely close the loop on that on the next uh, webinar. I'll give you an update on that front. So those are my slides. For those of you who'd rather uh, follow along on my screen, I'm going to do that as well. Um, and um, let's get started. Okay. Um, the who are we part was about like, are we dream builders? So we've answered that. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, a big, huge welcome. Um, thanks for being here and for exploring this interesting topic. Here's my introduction to the challenge mindset for those who haven't seen it. We're coming from a, a place where career development was delivered in a linear way. We ask kids, what do you wanna be, uh, excuse me, we ask kids, what's your favorite class? 
okay, you should study something related to that. Hopefully you can get a job that's connected with it. You study biology, become a biologist, work for a biology company. And then eventually, hopefully you realize what are you actually doing? What are the challenges you're actually working on, the problems you're trying to solve? Then you get there and maybe you're 10 years in your career and you figure out this is, in, this is not it. This is really not what's for me. The invitation with the challenge mindset is to flip the model, which means showing people challenges they can work on first, the companies that are working on them, who works there, what jobs do they have, and what did they learn to be able to do that? So this is an entirely new connection model. And today, what's really exciting about this opportunity is we get to talk about how do you make those connections? How do you do that research? And I'm going to do it live together on the call, exploring challenges, companies, jobs, education programs, and courses. <clears throat> and I'm expecting your questions, comments, and feedback about uh, how this would go to do this exercise with the people that you support. And um, the way I framed it for the invite was you've picked challenge cards, now what? The answer is you explore and you make connections between things you haven't connected before and you start collecting information, sort of like Pinterest. I like this person. I like this company. Um, I'm gonna favorite this type of job and I'm gonna remember that. And then after that, eventually you have to choose what to explore further. But this uh, webinar is not about the last step. It's not about like, how do you finalize your choice? It's really about that collection, that wide ranging, broad uh, collection of information. So the example that I gave for this, like broad thinking about careers in the TEDx talk is engineer better medicine. Who works on this challenge? You have a project manager, you've got a finance person, You've got someone creating the uh, logo, someone cleaning the lab equipment, something, someone ordering the equipment, an HR person hiring the team. And this type of broader thinking helps students let go of that job title mindset, let go of that very linear way of seeing careers. So the way we're gonna approach this is we're going to do online research uh, by looking online, using search engines, using Google, using online tools. And for me, when I work with students who are especially young, I find that uh, this is new. This is a new process for them that involves some level of complexity. Some of you who coach adults who use the challenge cards, uh, some of the adults might also feel the same way, that this is complex, they haven't done it before. Um, and for some of them, it might be much easier. But I like telling them that at the front end because I don't want them to be uh, surprised on the back end. The reason I tell you that is because if we put ourselves in their shoes, they're coming from a world where everything was linear. Literally, the teacher said, do this, ABC, in this way. Follow my instructions perfectly. Literally, the career test said, answer this quiz, I'll tell you what jobs you, you can do. So all their expectations are that things will be simple and linear. And we need to get them out of that mindset, in my opinion, for them to uh, make the most out of this exercise. And when I was working and I was trying to watch myself, I thought, wow, like this is really an example of going down the rabbit hole. Like I'm going to find a company I like or a person I like, and I'm going to dig around to kind of see like what I can find or what I can't find. Uh, so there is some intuition here. You do get into some sort of a flow. Uh, sometimes you go fast to kind of like uh, just follow your gut. And this is very different, again, than the analytical, very linear approach that we usually take on. Okay, question for you before we start is I want to know, like, how would you prepare your students for something like this? Um, um, you know, it's new information, it's not linear, it's complex, it's uncertain. Some of you who work, uh, so, some people use the challenge cards in grades six, seven, and eight. So they're actually doing courses on, uh, or modules on digital media literacy. Right? People need to learn how to search, how to evaluate, how to protect their privacy online, how to use online tools like LinkedIn, Indeed. One provocative question I like to ask them is, how many companies are working on your challenge? So let's say we have a student that picked engineer and better medicine. By me asking them, how many companies are working on your challenge? It causes them to pause. And it's one of these provocative, impossible questions that I like to ask, but there's a purpose behind it. It's like, wow, that's really hard to know. There's no way to answer this question in a linear way. 
Uh, and also it, it might be a time for you to um, challenge some assumptions because if someone tells you there's probably five to seven companies working on my challenge, they're wrong, right? There's, there are way more than that. Uh, and it just goes to show them, wow, there's probably a huge web of companies out there um, and uh, I need to open up my mind to that. Another way to prepare students that I found useful is to just show them an example. So instead of starting directly like, hey, go hunt, you know, go find a, a, an interesting company. Maybe you'll give them examples. And in my slides, I gave you a list of examples that are tied with certain challenges, certain challenge cards. So what you'll see here in this, is in this uh, file, and by the way, you have this file now, right? Like it's in the slides, you click on this link, it's yours, you can use this with your students. Um, it's not proprietary in the sense that I don't want you sharing this. I do want you sharing this. I think that's part of the idea that this is a mindset that anyone can access it. So this is something you could share with people. So what do I mean? If you have someone that chooses uh, engineer better medicine, maybe you're gonna give them these examples of companies uh, that they can look at first, just to get the ball rolling. Ultimately, you want them to have their own research skills, right? Those digital media literacy skills, but maybe it would help depending on the level of the person for, the, for you to give an example about uh, one of these companies. So if they click on the link, um, I might have linked it to the company's About Us page. Um, I might have linked it to the company's career page because this tends to have the best language, uh, the best examples, the best videos, the best pictures for our purposes. Okay, so I've shared some context. I've talked to you about how to introduce this to clients. I would like you to weigh in though. And that's the, that's the question I'm gonna to ask to the group now through the chat is, how would you prepare students to start this, this part of the exercise, which is finding companies that, you're, uh, uh, that, that are related to your challenge? Uh, it's gonna be online, it's gonna be non-linear. What would you do? How would you set them up? Nicola, you already have an idea. Um, a provocative question I've asked is, who's working on this challenge? And I get them to mind map it. So we'll use the challenge as a question in, as the mind map. So for example, I had an international student doing international development. She's from India and her big problem that she wanted to solve was making um, education mandatory for her, everyone in her country and big problem, right? So we started thinking about all of the roles and um, people that would come together to solve that problem. And it was not just about hiring teachers, but you needed to build schools and find bus systems and you need people to change laws and you needed advocates in the community to convince parents to send their children to school. And so it really put, pulled together a really big picture for her with, with a deeper understanding of the complexities of the problem. She's a first semester student. So that was enough information to get her thinking and wondering about where she might want to, um, what part, which part of it meant, had meaning for her and how she wanted to play a part in that role. But to understand the complexities of the problem um, attuned her to the, it gave her that meaningful component, not just a job title that she was gonna work for somebody else, but there was um, other partners to work with and um, a broader context to the entire problem. Thanks for sharing that example. Can I, can I ask for one more piece about the why, just to really contrast, not contrast, but show the benefit of what you did? Because what you said, Nicola, you could just do that online, couldn't you? Why did you take the time to not send or do all that research and, and do that separately as a thought, well, we as a mind mapping exercise first? We did it together. Um, uh, and it was a, an office appointment, so we did it together. And then we had already done a values exercise. So we brought her values pieces into it and asked her where, where the roles connected to her value pieces in, in terms of the meaning of the work. That's well. great. The way you explain it, for me, it feels like it's safer the way that you did it, right? It's safer. It's like you know, the learning principles of starting with the, what the person already knows, getting that down on paper. They, you know more about this challenge than you might think, exactly. right? So I like the, that suggestion yeah. that you gave because it really gets the ball rolling. I think it also opened up possibilities, right? As opposed to looking for something that's certain, that job title piece, it's always that certainty piece that you're trying to hang on to. It, it just broadened and built, built the whole um, problem and where she could jump in. Great. Um, what other questions, comments do you have before we uh, keep going? I had just a question then of the practical next step, like 
once she even focused in on one, like, how do you like tangibly help her find those companies? I mean, is it putting certain words into Google? I mean, that's, I think that's the part I don't, I would struggle with. I mean, I know how I would do it. I guess I, I tend to show students how Google is your friend. And when you put in, you know, words of your values or your, even your favorite class, like, and then use the word jobs or careers, you're going to get some hits. So I guess I'm just wondering, like, how did you help her, Nicole, Nicole on that next step, then how to identify some companies to explore? Nicola, yeah. can I, can I do it, Nicola? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Please. Great. And then you could tell me how, how you would do it after. Well, Krista, the simple have I answer is that in this, that? Message, the simple answer is in this scenario, we didn't get that far. Being a okay. first semester student, it was, that was enough for her to take back to chew on, right? Because, uh, but I, I would have some tips, but I'm totally interested in hearing how JP would. Great. This is the whole thing, Krista. It's like, uh, I get asked this question a lot and that's today. We're doing it today. Like uh, Yesterday, I spent hours prepping for this specific moment. I can't wait to talk about this. We're about to do it. It's like we set it up. Sorry, Nicola, I jumped in. I'm like, I don't even answer that. I want my turn first. Okay, it's let's do It's the sticky wicket piece. What's that? It's the sticky wicket piece. It's sticky, it's yeah. Okay, so sticky, great. this part, yeah. Okay, so let's, let's tackle it because um, it's sticky, but there's so much potential here. And once students feel empowered to, to tackle this on their own, Wow, this is a lifelong skill that they will get. We're, we're gonna do three students. I, I really hope we have the time. The first student is Preeti. The challenge she picked is distribute the wealth. And uh, so how did she even pick distribute the wealth? Well, I think you know this part. It's because she used the digital challenge cards or the physical challenge cards, or if you don't have the cards yet, she, she got a copy of a magazine. And for some reason there's, um, uh, this specific challenge speaks to her, okay? Distribute the wealth. What's the first step? Well, learn more. There's already some uh, chewable, meaty research for people to go out and discover there. Um, so, um, so she read, money and resources are unequally distributed among different people and countries. Yes, this speaks to me. Okay, I wanna change this, okay? So, um, Krista, you guessed it, right? Uh, I will try to see if Google can be my friend. So I literally do distribute the wealth and I search that on Google. I like to write the word companies. Uh, and in fact, sometimes the word organizations is a little bit more appropriate. Um, I would think about this sector. I think organizations even better. So organizations that distribute the wealth, I think that's a great start. So now students are poking around, right? And usually I, I get some good hits right at the beginning. So Krista, how's my screen size, by the way? Can you see that? Yeah, good. Okay, great. Because that's the format that we're going to do. So now I'm looking for a list of companies that close the wealth gap. Wait a minute. Close the wealth gap. Is that the same thing as distribute the wealth? Not linear, right? We're in full exploring mode. We're going down the rabbit hole. We're committing to doing some research. Oh, cool. There's a company that strikes debt. Uh, that's a huge problem to solve, isn't it? Uh, a non Here's another one, a continuous shared, a nonprofit dedicated to supporting Muslim American students and integrating them into society. Interesting. Donors choose, a nonprofit dedicated to supplying materials to public schools and students. Boom. If I'm pretty, this is it. I like this. Let me go find out more about donors choose. For some of your students, this is the first time they really visit a company website. So it's intimidating. Okay, thankfully they've been welcomed by a beautiful picture of a, of a loving, happy student. So that's a good start. But where do they go from here? Um, there's certainly a balance of reading and skimming, isn't there, when you're on a website. My favorite places to go uh, on uh, websites for challenge mindset research are the About Us page or the Careers page. So that's always where I'm gonna send students. So if I click on the About Us button, I know I'm gonna learn more about the company. And often they do a good job, especially mid to large companies at explaining their mission. So I'll go read, okay, we make it easy for anyone to help a teacher in need, moving us closer to a nation where students in every community have the tools and experiences they need for a great education. Love it. And then there's an invitation to join them. Um, oh, look, the company history. We were started by a history teacher more information about the team, how it works, 
Um, so now already I'm seeing like, oh, I, I'm able to digest a little bit. Preeti is like able to digest like what this company is, what they're doing. They even have some stats, which is great. Uh, and that's, more, that's useful information. The next place I like to go is the team because otherwise it feels very abstract. It feels like we're doing this in theory, but when you click on meet the team or about the team, you see people's faces. And there's something cool about seeing people's faces because it makes it more real. This is similar to the um, dynamic that I have with the tool, the challenge cards. I've kept job titles on the back of the challenge cards. This is only because I wanna make the whole experience concrete enough for students to bite into, uh, even though I want them to focus on the bigger challenge. So uh, maybe in this case, there's so many people on this page, maybe for Preeti, a good exercise would be to just look at the functions, the subtitles here, advocacy and public partnerships, finance. Oh, there's people working on finance as part of donors choose. Oh, people in marketing operations, people operations, product, engineering. What do you mean engineering and data? That's, I didn't expect that. You know, I thought for, for distribute the wealth, I thought you needed an, an economics degree. Are you following me here, right? Is that what some of your students say? Oh, it, it, wealth. I thought math or economics, but I'm on the page of donors choose and I'm seeing people who are working engineering. I gotta find out more. Alina, who's Alina? Okay, so she's a software engineer. Oh my gosh, that's so great because I took a coding class and I liked it. I never knew I could combine being a software engineer and solving a problem around distributing the wealth. So I wanna find out more about Alina. Google's my friend. What will Google tell me? They're gonna send me to LinkedIn. So some of your students are already signed up on LinkedIn. They're using it as a resource. For some of them, they're seeing this for the first time. So let's come back to LinkedIn and, and how and why to use it in a minute. But uh, just for the sake of exploring Alina's story, because I find that's a useful way to frame LinkedIn for students is that go see the person's story. And the story starts where? Well, for a lot of students that you're helping, like they wanna end up in this place. Like they want to uh, pick a major, uh, or graduate from a major. And what you'll see here is that she studied computer science and ethnic studies, kind of a cool combination. And then the person, uh, Preeti can go and research, well, what did she actually do? Oh, she worked while she was studying. She was an intern for this organization. Uh, and then she's been a software engineer at Donors Choose for a year and four months. So we've just went down the rabbit hole. We learned about a company working on the challenge that uh, Preeti cares about. We learned about some of the jobs and functions that were offered there. We found a specific person that she thought was cool. And then we looked at what did she have to learn to be able to contribute to that challenge? So I wanna pause there, get your thoughts, questions, comments, reactions. I, I guess my initial reaction is how I'm, I'm a naturally resourceful person. I, I love this kind of stuff. I love to dig in and research and you know, how do we help young people like get excited about that being the investigator, you know, to, to be like, you're on this, the scavenger hunt now, you know, trying to find it. And, and I, I say that kind of th those kind of things to my clients or my students, but I find that some of them aren't as naturally curious or something. They seem to, maybe I need to break it down into, demonstrating it more thoroughly like you did. So they see the results and I have, I guess I'm, I'm just always surprised that people like, they seem to get then stuck at that step and then, you know, they kind of are in that holding pattern for a while. So I don't know how to get them over that hump sometimes of that exploration. Yeah, Cause they want to go from the self-assessment right to like, I need a job. It's like, oh no, <laughs> there's this really important piece. That's so great, I, I love I just, that. That's just yeah. still the, I guess my students get stuck there. If I can make a guess, I'm guessing uh, the, research uh, queue of this group is in the highest you know, quartile or even more. And you're right, we do support people who are in, at all parts of the distribution of their skill and motivation to do that research. So can I open that question up to the group? How do you get someone to 
buy in, become interested, get motivated. The example that we keep coming up is, is, um, is doing an example with them. So we've already got that as a suggestion. Anybody else have a, a suggestion or idea that would uh, help unlock a student or open them up to doing this type of work? I'll, I'll jump in. Um, so I'm Carrie from the uh, McMaster University Career Counselor. Um, and I find sometimes just giving them permission or letting them know that we're gonna be in exploratory mode. This is just gonna be fun. There's no expectations really. Let's see what we can find, but we will get to something concrete for you. Like just sort of letting them know that we are gonna get there. Cause I do, I find some students when they're exploring, they, they're still anxious about finding the thing. So just sort of letting them know that we will get there. Um, but let's just have fun, see what we can explore. But I think JP, your, your process was very nice and clear. I think it was, there was a process to it in its exploration and its curiosity. So I think having some structure within the exploration, I think would be, is great to help sort of find that larger group of like to fit a lot of more people into the system or, or have people feel comfortable with it. So I like so that. Yeah. It's like you, the way you said, like primes them to, to be in the right mindset. So we either say things or do things to help prime them. And I'll, I, in, a, in a further slide, I've got some of the principles summarized that I used during that, that research. And I want to do two more with you today uh, to test out those principles. But thanks for sharing that comment. Jennifer, did you want to go next? Yeah, I was, thank you. I was just going to add one more thing around um, how to increase the motivation. And what we found is in a group environment, if you get them to do it for other people, it's easier to go down the rabbit hole for someone else uh, than it often is for yourself. So we've been doing this, I mean, a version, I think I talked last at the last um, webinar about a version of this using a Padlet board. So you get the people in the group to work on other people's challenges and help them out. That's fascinating. But Jennifer, doesn't that tell us something about why people aren't doing it in the first place? Like if they have the ability to do it uh, for other people, uh, how come it's harder for them to do it themselves? Is it like, what are we overcoming? Is, is, I don't know if you have any insights on that or if that's just something we should keep thinking about, but is it fear? What do you think it is? I think, I think it could be fair. I think, you know, sometimes Sometimes when you've thought about an idea, you might think about it in a linear way. Um, it can be hard to, to come up with those kind of wild ideas when you're trying to imagine yourself doing it. Um, and, and an example I'll give from a class was, um, oh, I'm not gonna get it perfectly right, but there was a woman who had said, something along the lines of communicating ideas and emotions. I think that was her top challenge, but she wanted to uh, work in journalism in a very specific area. And someone commented that she should um, pilot it out with her grandmother or something like that. And, and she responded saying, I would have never thought of that even though it was right in front of me. Um, because in my mind, I'm thinking I need to go all into this. Mm. And so someone was able to offer her an idea that was like literally right in front of her, but she hadn't given herself permission to consider. That's a really good uh, description. Thanks for sharing those, that example. And this whole idea of doing it for someone else, that's I, I love it. This is why this is community. I'm so thrilled that you're all here because you've taught me so much about the challenge mindset over the years. Some of you who have been here from the start, you know, literally the amount of challenge cards has grown because of your ideas and suggestions, but also the techniques like that one that you just suggested, Jennifer, I hadn't thought about that either. So I love it. Thank you for throwing it out there. Uh, we'll have to find a way to uh, get that idea into our educator guide as a suggestion uh, for how to do this types of, of research. Uh, Krista said, uh, there's a new level of accountability when the process is spelled out versus when it's just an idea or dream. Yeah, and I hesitate with how much I should spell it out. Um, so um, I'll show you like more about the, the, the principles later versus keeping it open-ended. And Jennifer, it can also be hard for students to identify their own strengths and to envision their own success. Yeah, we do have blockers when it comes to that, don't we? Uh, but I think one of the core messages behind this entire thing is the world needs you. Uh, and the world needs you. And that, that's not always an easy message to hear for your students who have been hearing the opposite for most of their lives. 
Uh, but I feel differently. And that's what motivates me to do my work is that I really think there are so many challenges, problems, and opportunities out there and the world needs our students. Um, and uh, it's an exciting thing that we get to help them discover that. Sabrina, my students report that the stakes feel very high when they're in the process. You bet, you bet, because they have to go back and answer to someone. You know, sometimes it's their parents or sometimes it's someone who's putting pressure on them and they feel like they need to have a great answer. That to me is where like, I wanna be a lawyer and I wanna be a doctor, that part of that comes from that, you know? So I get that the stakes are high. And there's pressure I figured out already. Um, yeah, you bet. Okay, oh, uh, oh, Amelia, I'll let you go next and then I'm, I wanna do a couple more examples. Okay, um, yeah, just really quickly, I just wanted to add um, one of the things that I find helps people and I don't uh, tend to work with students, but what helps is to say there is no right or wrong. And I can really imagine that a lot of students kind of see like research. Okay, that's like school. Okay, maybe there, maybe there's something here that I need to know or see a specific way, kind of like going back to that linear idea. So just to tell the student, there's no right or wrong. Go with your intuition, like follow the things that you find interesting in your research. You don't have to be methodical about it. You can, you can just kind of keep going to, down the rabbit hole of what's interesting to you, what's sparking your attention. Yeah, I like that. Thank you, Amelia. Timothy, I like your suggestion about local or not. Um, I actually plan on talking about that. So I'm gonna come back to uh, your idea in just a, little, uh, just a little bit. So the next student that we are working with, his name is Eric. And guess what? Eric picked protect society from crime. However, he did not think about a police officer when he thought about this challenge. He thought about cyber crime. Why? Well, he read the back of the card and he realized that there's many different ways to protect the public from crime. So what's the method? I'm gonna search for this keyword, cybercrime. And um, I like adding you know, the word companies. Companies, cybercrime. And already we've got some options, all right? 110 must know securities is stats, that's not it. Top cybersecurity companies, that's a bit more interesting. I like lists of top companies. So I'm gonna go with that one. It's just the first one that I saw. Um, and then we start reading CyberArk, CrowdStrike, uh, BlackBerry, FireEye. Oh, FireEye sounds cool. Let's do FireEye. So if I'm looking for FireEye, I wanna find out, I'm gonna to go to their home page, and I have the same approach. I kinda of wanna get a sense of like what this company is just by how they load up on the page. And then I'm gonna look for about us, okay? They used a different word here. It's not called about us. I had to go company first before I went to about us. So uh, this is something that students need to learn, right? There's no, there's no easy roadmap that all companies will follow. But if I click on company and then find the fire, uh, uh, the about us, there's always these great um, videos, like inspirational videos from the CEO. Uh, and sometimes I think it's useful to tell students to actually go watch that stuff because you want them to get that intangible energy, right? When they're here for, um, uh, for, ins for inspiration. And uh, you see these guys have, um, uh, you know, animated graphics and um, uh, they've got this, what does this mean? Relentless protection. These threat groups were newly named by FireEye since 2017. Threat groups, what does it mean? Let's find out. APT38, suspected attribution, North Korea, target sectors, financial institutions worldwide. Boom, everything got really concrete <laughs> all of a sudden. Our analysis of the North Korean regime backed threat group, we're calling APT38, like that's exciting. Cyber heist, maybe that's something that the person's interested in. So they can read more about that specific uh, uh, a problem that they ran into, the challenge that they're trying to solve. Again, I eventually want to direct them to um, the uh, careers section, okay? Depending on the age of the person you're working with, you click on, you could click on job opportunities or internships. Uh, I'm gonna click on internships for sure because um, uh, the, the language tends to be the simplest language that you'll find on the website, the most direct explanation about uh, what they do. Uh, and then again, interns, great, someone's face, it's a real person and they're young, you, you know, they're like me, great. Sophia, so maybe uh, Sophia caught Eric's eye. He wants to know more. Sophia, threat, intel, analyst, intern. Awesome, let's see. 
And again, uh, when I search for more information about Sophia, her LinkedIn profile comes up and we get to see her story. Now to see this, you need an actual LinkedIn account. So we need to talk about how to set up a LinkedIn account and who that's right for. But I wanna see Sophia's story. Uh, what did she study? Oh, her undergrad was in international relations. Oh, that's different. That doesn't say cyber crime or cybersecurity. Her master's was in security studies. Oh, maybe this is a grad school. Uh, something I could do specifically in grad school. And then the student can actually go research what is the program like at Georgetown uh, regarding security studies. And then he can see actually uh, what Sophia's background was, what she did before. And one thing that the student I think will notice right away is she doesn't work at that company anymore. <laughs> okay, so it was an internship. It was four months. Great, where is she now? Mitre. And now are you seeing like how we're in the rabbit hole now? Okay, Mitre, maybe she decided not to keep working at um, FireEye because it wasn't that good. Maybe she thought Mitre was better. Uh, I already like the fact that Mitre has a careers tab. Uh, they have an actual student program. Well, that's pretty cool. Student program, you can make a difference at Mitre. I like it. And you could, there's actually frequently asked questions here. Co-ops and intern, recent grads. They have campus events. Um, this is good. Recent graduates, student voices. Um, uh, I like it. Very interesting. Some of you who are asking them to connect with people, you're going to share the fact that guess what? You can actually send an email to Sophia. Here's how you find out what her email is at Mitre. You can send her a message and you can ask her, what's the challenge that you're trying to solve? Uh, how did you get to where you are today? What advice do you have for me? And then that can help the whole story come alive for the student. So um, I'm going to check questions, comments, reactions to our second case study where we explored cybercrime. I think, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I think GP, um, to, ask, to echo, I think it was Krista who said some people are more naturally curious, but I, just if I could just bring up the word that we all know and have a love-hate relationship, and that's passion. And I work mostly with high school students, and they say, you know, I just want to find what I'm passionate about. And, you know, they might end up at FireEye and say, well, I don't really feel very passionate about FireEye. And it, it goes, it tracks back to what Krista said, which is some people are more curious and enthusiastic and passionate than others, but it's such a loaded word, passion. And, you know, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I think when we have good intentions and try to steer people towards doing something that they like, we can get lost in finding one passion. Uh, uh, so thank you for giving that example, Sabrina. Um, there's a comment in the chat, uh, where uh, Susan reminded me just to, is something really clear about the process. Today, we're talking about an area, like a, a, a um, what's the best way to describe it? A very specific part of the process that's about the online research. But we skipped several steps uh, because we've either I've talked about that before or they're in the educator guide that I'm gonna share with you. But what did we skip? Well, we missed, we skipped up. Uh, we, uh, we didn't talk about the, the fact that you want to have a powerful introduction for the challenge mindset, uh, how to set up for students for success when they do the card store, digital or physical. Um, one of my favorite steps is uh, um, asking a meaningful debrief, which means asking them, why did you choose this challenge? Uh, what difference do you want to make in the world when it comes to that? What skills do you have that could contribute? Today, we're talking about down the line further about doing the online research, but your comment was really key for me, Susan, because I, I want that to be super clear. Like I want that to um, um, be very well defined. So you know what I, I, I uh, wanna do is just to send, there's a couple of people that are on here for the first time, right? So I wanna send the educator guide in the comments where you can see uh, all of those steps laid out, especially those meaningful questions, like the one that's, uh, why did you choose that challenge? So I just added a link in the chat for that. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, as an educator, I'm just wondering, um, is there still value in presenting the method without doing all the research? Like if you're presenting to younger kids or grade eight students, for instance, 
they might be overwhelmed by this research, but is there still value in just presenting the idea that we're going to explore challenges and then we're going to work backwards to, to maybe even skip over the companies, but go to uh, what kind of people and what job titles would work on that and then go to what kind of courses would you take, let's say in high school or even volunteer experiences to add skills in the knowledge set, right? Completely. And another great comment uh, that I, I wish I would have front ended before Rose, but because you said it, we can be really clear about it. Yes, the, the challenge cards are being used by younger and younger students all the time. And just showing them the cards, you're inoculating them against the job title mindset. It won't be appropriate uh, for someone in grade eight to do a whole research project, delineating their favorite companies, uh, you know, people, jobs, education programs. It's too thorough, it's too much work. I see what I'm presenting today more as a menu of things that you can pick and choose from based on where you think your student or client is at. Uh, for example, for some of you in grade eight, you actually want to do an informational interview, but you're going to do one for the whole class. So you'll do a challenge card and you're going to do the work to find that person in the community. And then you're going to help students practice asking questions. So you just kind of pulled what you thought was best, most appropriate at the time. Uh, so I think there is, an, there is value in uh, presenting only some specific aspects based on what you think is best for them at the time. See, I was thinking of using it as a tool to help them with their course selections for grade nine in high school. So we were going to go in and start with this before we tell them how to choose courses and, um, and then just present the idea of what, what kind of books or stories or movies, documentaries or things on social media have really uh, stirred you up or made an impact on you and then kind of relate those to a challenge and then therefore kind of look at what kind of jobs or even just look at the knowledge set or skill set that you think would be needed to work on that challenge. Um, my, my, my only worry is that I'm not sure if they can make that connection to the knowledge and the skill set that they need to work on the challenge. Yeah, it's difficult. The overall message is that you're going to learn something that's going to help you work on a challenge you care about. Tremendous value in them understanding that some students don't even know why they're in school you're giving them a good reason why. Now for them to be able to guess, uh, for some of them, they'll, they'll, they'll work, right? They'll be able to say, well, I think that studying this could help me with that. And that will be enough guidance. For others, it won't. It won't have the level of specificity, granularity that they need. Like, I don't ha like they, I'll, they'll say, I don't have any proof that, you know, uh, taking the physics class will actually help me work on this challenge. I need to talk about it with someone or I need to you know, do some online research. So um, uh, my guess is, is this gonna be a mix. Is that fair, Rose? Yeah, mixed in terms of what the, student, what the students can do. Some will be able to make the connections and some won't. Yeah, like some of them will be intuitively be able to say like, oh, I think there's value in me studying biology, but others will have uh, some unanswered questions without doing uh, more research. Yeah, but there's still value in the process, I think. Um, just getting them to think backwards from a challenge. Completely, I completely agree. Thanks for that Thank comment. You. Let's do uh, one more. I wanna show you one that's in the skilled trades. Uh, so now we're shifting to talking about Stephanie. Her favorite challenge card is using special equipment. So she picked special equipment and she looked at, and instead of finding a word that connected with her, she started with a job title. So there's a different point of entry for her, okay? So she really wants to know, what is it like to be a millwright? What is a millwright? Um, Google's getting even better at showing you actual job related results. And um, I'm not opposed to students coming at it a different way. Some students might actually use the challenge mindset from a bottom up, like they'll say like, I wanna study uh, security studies. What kind of challenges can I solve with that? Um, sometimes it's good to ride the wave and kind of follow their thinking to see where it leads them. So for me, if I'm seeing millwright jobs, they're showing my location, by the way, I'm in Ottawa. So I see one here for certain teed. I've never heard of certain teed, the company, but when I look them up, what am I going to learn? Okay, great. Products, design, responsible learning, pro center. Uh, interesting. Okay. So right away, I'm seeing very visual uh, opportunities to use special equipment to design what? Homes. It sounds like a residential home company. Um, so there's all sorts of products that I can check out. Uh, but again, if I, uh, if I want the student to actually learn and do more, 
I want them to focus on the uh, about us page so they can actually uh, get more information. So uh, about us, sometimes it's at the top of the page, sometimes at the bottom. Uh, I like the uh, careers page as well. Uh, and then there's a whole bunch of opportunities if you want to look at careers. There's actually jobs listed. If you search for jobs, you find out that they're connected to a bigger company called Saint Jobin or Saint Gobain. And I watched this inspirational video here, and uh, I think that'll get your students motivated to uh, have a career in the skilled trades because it shows the impact of the skilled trades in a really emotional way. Uh, and uh, anyways, I thought the video was great. And uh, there's more stats, there's featured careers. Uh, and again, you can see all sorts of different opportunities that exist for Stephanie. Um, I had more here to show you in the rabbit hole, but. I shouldn't go uh, past our time together uh, because uh, I really respect your time and I'm really glad you're here. And there's a couple more things I wanna show you before you uh, take off. So um, using my slides, uh, you actually have a list of uh, principles that we described today. Whoops, sorry, I stopped sharing. Let me show you the list of principles that uh, I had in mind. We did things like what? Uh, we asked students to read the back of the card. They chose keywords. Sometimes they search for companies that or organizations that. We focused on the careers, the about us page. Sometimes we were skimming, other times we were reading. We looked at videos, the mission, people. We looked on LinkedIn for the story of the person, uh, the education that they had. And then if you have a few minutes to stay on, um, the question about going local or not local, uh, I'll, I'll do that right after we end. Uh, so the news I wanted to give you is that I do want to write a challenge mindset book. Uh, I'd love your feedback on this webinar. What was the most useful? What was the least useful for you? I'll put that link now in the uh, comments. And in there, I would love to hear your suggestions for future webinar topics. So thank you for your participation, your ideas, and um, your presence. I'm thrilled that you're making this mission come alive. Uh, because I know it's changing the lives of students. So huge thank you for being here. Lucie asked, is this also available in French? Uh, the whole tool is available in French, uh, Luce. Uh, and, uh, so, and I even have the educator guys translated in French as well. Jennifer, thanks for coming. Carrie, thank you too. Jillian, thanks as well. Timothy, I don't know if you had a couple minutes to hang on, but I did want to uh, address the local uh, issue. I think you're muted right now, Timothy. Um, I'm muted, sure, great. Great. So big thank you to everybody. If you've left to sign off, thanks for coming. Hope to see you at the next one. Thanks for filling out the form. Uh, and Timothy, let's get right to your question. Sure. I work with a lot of uh, school districts and even community colleges that work in rural regions. And just like, you know, that last example we did, Stephanie started actually with using the job title. Sometimes in, in smaller regions, in rural regions, we actually start with the companies. What are the companies that are in my region? Which ones employ the most people? And then we go directly to their websites. And then we infer what are the challenges that they're trying to solve based on right. the mission of the organization? So right. uh, I read a lot into your suggestion, but how does that connect with the idea it, that you have? It, it, it totally connects. Okay, great. Yeah, it's, it's great. I, I, I like that idea. The issue is that it's inferring the challenge that the uh, company's working on is, is, is very difficult for students. So what's the best way to prep them? Well, I think it's by doing the challenge cards exercise. So they do the challenge cards exercise. They kind of absorb that way of thinking. You know, they see 53 examples of challenges to solve. Now they're much better equipped to then go on the company websites and do some analysis about what problems are being solved. Is there a, a digital or is there an online version of the challenge cards yet? Yes, there is. Yeah, Great. there is. And that's the one I was poking around in here uh, when I was giving my examples and like that big purple screen. So uh, some school boards get it for the whole school board. Sometimes individual schools get it. There's several people on this call that were that are already using them. Um, Jennifer Bader, who was making uh, a few comments about like how to help somebody else. She was one of the first at the University of Western Ontario uh, to use it. Great. Great. Thanks, thanks for your thanks question. Thanks very much. Great webinar. Thank you. Thanks for being here.
Yes, Rose. No, I just want to ask a question. Um, I am I am using this again in your presentation, and I'm wondering if you have some sort of a YouTube video or a clip where the someone is speaking about their career path and having used the challenge mindset, like that it's actually whether they did it intentionally or unintentionally, but that they looked at the world, saw a need, then started to think about what they needed to do or what kind of skills or knowledge they needed to address it. Yeah, that's good. I don't. Um... I want to write that in the book. Like I'm actually collecting a bunch of stories like that. The easiest one for me to do so far, Rose, has been entrepreneurs, like people like Elon Musk. Uh, he didn't set out to have a job title, right? He's just set out to solve big problems. Uh, so I've got, that's going to be easy to find entrepreneurial example, but I want to have like a huge breadth of examples. So I will be collecting those stories and those types of videos. Uh, so definitely um, uh, I'll be populating those in the educator guide as we go along. Okay, and did you say the PowerPoint that you were showing us is available to us? Yes, do you have it already? I don't think so. Let me send it to you right now. JP, are the previous webinars like this been recorded? Can I find those somewhere? Because this is my first one and I really enjoyed it. So I didn't know if oh, I could good. watch Oh good, thank ones. you for saying that. Uh, yeah, we had another one uh, last month and it is recorded. Uh, so you'll find it on our YouTube channel and we'll put this one on the YouTube channel as well. I don't know if this is a problem to solve, but I, I just had a what we call a career chat with a, a young Hispanic male nurse. And when he had read the statistic in high school that there were only 1% of nurses were male and Hispanic, that was the reason he chose it and stuck with it because wow. that was the problem he wanted to solve. He didn't want that to be the statistic anymore. So if that fits in any way to what you're thinking, it's a little different than obviously your challenge cards, but I don't know how that would fit in any of the challenge cards. But I just thought that was such an interesting motivation for him when he heard and that. how's he doing? He's doing fantastic. He actually works at a local university in the simulation lab and does actual um, nursing on the weekends too. So his, his career is already starting to evolve, but he it was, I'll share actually, we, we, we videotaped it. I'll share it with you. Cause I think it'd be fun for you to watch to right. see because he, he just overcame so many barriers to keep plugging on it because he was first generation. He had no other medical professionals in his life. I mean, the number of walls he hit, but that one problem he wanted to solve that statistic kept him motivated. That's, that's nice. pretty fascinating. That's, amazing. that's a great story. I hear a lot of uh, nonprofits uh, or even schools that work with students that have been, that have faced big barriers. They make that link. I don't know if it's the same link you made, but it's like, if you've had to overcome a personal barrier in your life, or you've had a challenge you've had to overcome, they make that connection with challenges to solve in the world. Even though like that's like a personal challenge versus like a labor market challenge, that there's, there's a connection that the students are able to make. So I, I like that wording around it. Amelia, how did we do today? So awesome and such funny timing because this only came up on my radar yesterday, but actually I'm in the middle of a group coaching program and tomorrow we're going to talk about the challenge mindset. Um, yeah, exactly. That's, like, that's crazy timing. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for spreading the word. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I think it's a uh, you know, I continue to think it's such a valuable exercise. And so it's a permanent part of my career clarity class. That's what I call it. I love it. Thank you for making it a permanent part. I like the sound of that. <laughs> Did you see Sally's cool image to promote the, uh, the webinar? Is that how you got connected? I, I think I saw email? it on Instagram. Instagram. Great. Did you see the nice image that Sally made? I, I think so. I'm okay. like, like, I'm sure I saw it. It's not sticking in my mind, but great. That's really cool. Obviously caught my attention. So great. Well, Good thanks. I'm, I'm glad you came. And any other questions, comments, uh, uh, Nicola, I have to tell you, I really wanted to get to, um, you know, the setup for LinkedIn. Like, how do you get young people to use LinkedIn? I have a couple articles that I had in my deck. I just didn't get to it today. Uh, but I guess you can't get to everything, can you? <laughs> We did loads today. It was great. Thank you so much. Great. We thanks. can make about focusing about the next one. Right. Exactly. I do have to think about what's the next one, and that could be one of them. Yeah, for sure. And we've got Chin Yi from Singapore. Thanks for being here. Um, I imagine it's very early for you, so uh, I, I appreciate you joining. Thank you very much. Sabrina, great to see you. Mary and Jennifer. Leanne, thanks for being here as well. 
Lovely to see you all. Let's, we're going to do another webinar in um, November and then probably not one in December. Here. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, JP. Thanks, so much. Bye. Have a good Bye. afternoon. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Mary. Bye, Jennifer.